All right, welcome to the next episode of Dude, Where's My Flashlight? We have then yeah. Aaron Simmons from Represented New York in the USA. Brother Aaron, how are you, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. You know, I'm so excited about this podcast. I've wanted to have you on here for a long time. We talked for an hour and a half yesterday, just, <laughs> just shooting the shit. And honestly, if it's anything like that, dude, it's going to be an amazing podcast. Cool. Buddy, uh, I got I to gotta give it to you, you know. One of the one of the things I pulled out from yesterday's conversation was just you know your love of of trying everything you know yeah. your, your 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 diversity and the creativity not only just in the tools but how you use them dude why is why is using so many different techniques and creativity and diversity why is it so important to you man uh, well I like to look at it as like uh, your little book of magic it's where you got all your spells all your tricks right so. Um, the more you have, just like the more powerful you kind of become, you know. Uh, I I'm I'm into like that fantasy and like magical kind of stuff. Um, so even from being a kid, so uh, once I found light painting, like the first thing I w wanted to do is make like a Kamehameha wave come out from like Dragon Ball Z, you know. And I was like, this stuff is so cool. And as I started like pulling out random like old lightsabers from the from like my parents' house, just that they still had, hoping that they turn on, to go to festivals and seeing all those like LED hoops and the whips. I was like, I gotta get me some of this stuff, you know. So I, I looked into it. I kind of got one or two things, but it was like too expensive. So I started just kind of figuring out how to build my own. So most of the whips I use are whips that I've just built. Because uh, it's a lot cheaper. It took a lot of time. I, I had like one summer where I was just making blades and whips and, and staffs and all these random things. Uh, it was just like a summer project for me, just making a bunch of crappy stuff. And then a few of them worked. And I still use them today. So Totally, man. Totally. Uh, you know, I think we've got so much in common besides our first name. Uh, you know, it's like you're, you're sitting in New York and you're sending out these messages, you know, and you're thinking about ideas and creativity's floating through the atmosphere and it's landing on me. And, you know, we yeah. I, just talking to you yesterday, we had a couple of just revelations like, oh, my God, you know, like we're so connected. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the things that we connect through is honestly is festivals. And I go through I go to a lot of festivals. I paint at festivals. I know you try to light paint at festivals. Um, talk to me about painting a light uh, at festivals. Does it, what's your challenge there? I mean, I know you, you asked it's, me this person, like, dude, how do you do this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, I've done a booth a couple times. Um, and the first thing you do when you're setting it up, everyone's just like, what, what is this? And, and it's all set up and you're kind of just waiting for somebody to show up unless you have like somebody helping you out and you're doing the test shots. Nobody knows what's happening. They just see like this camera set up and some lights waving around. But, you know, I don't have a screen other than on the camera. So um, it takes a little while. You just kind of kind of convince one or two people in. And then once you get, it gets going, all of a sudden there's like a crowd around you. And uh, it's, it's funny because it's a festival. So there's so much going on. And the people are just either walking by to go back to their campsites or to the music. And... Uh, some people are just like amazed by some of the tools because they see see some of them, but some of them they're like, "What is this?" Like, and uh, one of the things I had to deal with because I'm so like, like I love sharing this stuff, and and anything I have is 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 everyone else's for the most part. So people want to play with these tools to kind of get a feel for them. So I'm like, "Here, go for it," and it ended up like running out of batteries a lot like I had to like stop letting people play with them because they're just waving them around and stuff I'm like if you want to use them you have to use them in a photo now because like I it like everything's dying on me and I can't charge everything at once so uh that was a pretty fun experience um but it was exhausting because it was just like once it started rolling it, there was like no break yeah just like, oh man <laughs> okay we're we're in it now. Yeah. And you know, you're just kind of trying to watch everybody, make sure nobody's like tripping over any wires or or uh, the models are staying still. You're trying to explain it to the people who are in the photo, and other people are just asking you questions the whole time. So yeah, it's it's rough, man. I mean, like I guess the question is, how do you get them to stay still? I mean, that was my always my biggest challenge. I mean, they're they're fairly intoxicated. They're certainly 
you know, distracted, I would say is, yeah. is the least amount of, yeah, yeah, that's a good word they're, for it. they're distracted word. for sure. So, um, yeah, you know, it's like, how do you get them to stand still? And then honestly, I, I just ended up kind of doing just quick tube spins or just really quick, like fiber optic, you know, aura kind of photography, which, which is really super cool. And it's super easy. Uh, both of right. them are, yeah. are pretty quick and they don't, you know, stand still for five seconds, maybe 10. Don't right. move. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's, especially at a f festival that's challenging i mean it's challenging in general if they've never heard of light painting before they think like all right the, the camera went off it's done and you're like no 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 like we gotta do it again now yeah um with that situation i found um using a flash ended up being like the best best thing to do because you're trying to make something um that they're gonna love you know, and you're trying to make something that they want to take home and they want to share with everybody because, you know, share life painting. Um, and they don't understand it. And you try to explain it really fast, really quick, because other people want to do it as well. Um, and other people have all these questions. So you try to just do everything at once. And the flash is really like, like the way to freeze them. And then so if they did kind of move, you know, it wasn't a big deal because um, you're just kind of filling in with different textures and everything so if there's a shadow from their movement they're not even going to notice that you you know you might not even notice it because you yeah. got so much going on yeah um so that like that that was like uh a big help for me once i started doing that because flashlight works too but now you're kind of flashing them in the eyes a little longer than a flash would you know and <laughs> and if you miss oh, a spot, uh oh my friends they, they're all just like Anyone who's light painting with me has been blinded by me, of course, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's yeah. just kind of been a, a, it's a running joke of theirs. It's like, oh, what are you going to blind me again? Instead of, what are we going to go light painting? Like, what are you going to blind me? <laughs> yeah. Um, did, did you find festivals through music? Like, were you yeah. like, I, I know you love music, and I want to talk about the correlation between the beautiful music that you write and produce and make. Uh, in You know, obviously it translates into your light painting, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, how important is music to you, like, personally? Oh, it's, I mean, I don't know what, I, I don't know what I would do without music. I, like, I mean, I feel like that, like, everyone should feel that, or might feel that way one way or another, because, you know, you use it when you're sad, you use it when you're happy, you use it when you're not feeling anything, you know, sometimes it's to help bring out that emotion, and sometimes it's to help distract it, you know, or, or uh, express it, so... Music, music and photography are like the two things, the only two things I'm really passionate about other than like traveling and being outdoors. Um, so it's kind of funny because growing up, I was always a sports kid, you know, I didn't do any art. I didn't really like I listened to music, but it was like, you know, I was going through the punk stage and the rap stage and this and that. Um, I didn't get into music or photography till after college or or maybe like in college um and that's when I started finding how to express myself because that's why I didn't I never did art because I couldn't draw every time I tried to draw it either took too long or it didn't come out right and I never liked it I was never confident in any of it nothing from what my head was was not what I was seeing on paper mm. um mm. but I, I I I can do it with music I can do it with with light painting more than anything that's what the real love is like my way of being able to draw so i can be call myself a painter even though like you give me a piece of paint uh, a paint brush and some actual paint i'm gonna draw you a stick figure like <laughs> like that that's that's how good i am <laughs> no i hear you man uh, i struggle with it constantly um you know, it's one of the things I'm working on, honestly, right now, uh, is doing a lot of intricate drawing, pen work, um, calligraphy. Some yeah, of the most remember. challenging, yeah, some of the most challenging things uh, in light painting that I've attempted so far. Um, it really is. Like, yeah. I, it's, it's a, that's one of the things, like the light writing, like, like I can do a little light writing and I can do words, but it takes a really long time and I'll probably take a couple shots. Um, but D D gave me the best tip for writing words with the, with the using your body as a, as the space for each word. That was like, oh, I can do this now. 
Knight Riders, though, those things are so tricky. I, I just like, I know it's just, you gotta practice. You gotta practice, practice. When you were in, when we were in Oregon at the meetup, you, you started doing that. You're like, I really want to practice this stuff. And you're showing me, you're doing it in your van, like this tiny little space. And I'm like, ah, I gotta, gotta give them credit. Like, I know I needed to do this for a while. And I still have, I'm like, that's, it's like, I got so many other things to practice. I, I'm a, I'll get to it at some point. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So I got to ask you, what, what are you working on right now? And what are you, what are your big goals for 2020 in light painting? Like right now I got uh, an art show coming up in February. Uh, right when I get back from Denver, uh, this coming up week, and then um, I'm teaching a class at Princeton Photo Photography Workshop in May. So that was I did that last year, and it was it was talk about nervous. We were talking about being nervous, like doing a, a gig or, or introducing light painting to somebody more than just like your friends. You're like, oh, I hope they like it. I hope like it's not too much for them. I hope they're interested and they're not bored of it. You know, that was like, there was a lot to do with that class. That was like, that was probably one of the most, I don't want to call it stressful because it wasn't stressful, but like nervous things that I did uh, last year was that class. And it's like, all right, I teach my friends all the time because I don't have any light painters out here. You yeah. know, I didn't meet a light painter up until the Virginia meetup from uh, Jason. I think two years ago, I think it was, right? Or maybe a year or two ago. Um, that was the first time I met anybody anybody else at Light Paints. Everybody else is just like friends that I just like drag along. Or, you're going to stand here. You're going to do this. You're going to wave this light around and you're going to you're gonna hit the button. And then, and yeah, you know, it's just like kind of coordinating everybody. Um, yeah, man. It's like Sandlot football, right? You're in the huddle and you're like, all yeah. right, you Deep and exactly. you out to the right, and I'm gonna pitch it to you, and then you throw it deep, and we're gonna fake the block, and you know, dude, it's perfect. Yeah. When you have a lot of people doing it, it's sometimes it can get a little crazy and maybe not so executed, but it's way more fun with more people, you know? Right? Yeah. You know, they might not be the most perfect shots, but they're always the most fun, and the 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 favorite, they're my favorite to look back at. Like you're like, oh man, like who was doing this again? And and I can't believe they did that. They came up with this, you know. Um, that's what I, that's, I mean, that's the other thing with light painting that I love so much is just sharing it and, and getting people involved because the people who are interested, they absolutely love it. Like, like I do. So it's something so like awesome and fun to share and, and get people involved. And for me, like for a while, it was a goal to like basically get a light painting pupil and just teach them everything I know so that when they go home, they're light painting and they're, and then one, one day that week, they're going to come back and show me what they did without me. Like, cause a lot of times if I'm not there out where I'm living, no one's doing it. So they'll ask like, Oh, when are we going to light painting? I'm like, you can do it without me. Like, that's what I really want to see. I want to yeah. see what's like in your head and I want to see what you can do. I want you to come back with a technique that I've, I haven't tried or figuring something new out like oh I really like that you know like that's how you learn that's how um, I learned yeah I no I, I couldn't agree more you know I, I think we, we had a good talk with with Gunner and, and you know he was like you know there will be no progress unless they're sharing and sharing of the yeah. knowledge um yeah. you know and, and I, I really I really as you know I'm a very heartfelt person when it comes to that because I want this to grow and I want people to learn techniques and think of their own because when you start to learn from other people then you start to think oh cool if they thought about that outside the box i can think of this outside the box if they use this you know vase of flowers to paint with then yeah. you know i'm going to use a you know lambskin you know or yeah, something you, know, yeah, so yeah. you have around you're just like, yeah, you're like oh, i don't have that and it well, often leads to success and, and the biggest success is when you kind of make your own footsteps in the snow. You know, I mean, for me, yeah. I, I really value that. Um, I, and I value other footsteps. I think that we need them and I hope to make some for other people. But like you said, sharing is is lead, leading those roadmaps or leading those wood signs saying this way to this to this yeah. town, this exactly. way to this town is, is. And you go, oh, okay, well, I it, wanna go this way. I wanna go, I wanna go do that. And you're just, or you're like, well, that's been done. I mean, this is one thing why I'm always trying new things and like either incorporating mixture of 
of techniques or mm. um, I just try to think outside the box. If I've seen it done, there's two things that I, I want to do when I see a photo that I really like and I think I've figured out. is One, to do it myself, like recreate that image with whatever I got going around, you know, because I probably won't have that car or this thing. Um, so whatever I got floating around and then like my own twist to it. I mean, the other thing is to see like, well, this is how you usually do it. What happens if you do it this way? Or what happens if you add this? Like, like with the spire graphs. Um, one of the, I, I love doing spire graphs, but you know, it's, it's the same kind of look to it every time because it's that pinhole light. Like, there's got to be some way to like just change that up. Like, what happens if I attach a plexiglass blade to it? And uh, the first time I did it, I was like, oh, that didn't work. And, and I was like, what about a brush, a fiber optic brush? I was like, all right, that's good, like, background to, like, an addition, like a layer. And then I was like, well, this blade didn't work. Let's try this blade. And let's try different things. The square, the rectangle blade works amazing for spire graphs. Cool. Uh, that's, like, my favorite thing with the spire graphs right now. I've, that's probably going to be my next project when I get back from Denver is do some, uh, some new spire graph stuff. Um, I haven't ever done one. I have the setup. I did have the setup in my living room until tonight when I have a big photo shoot and I don't, I don't have the space for people to be tripping yeah. over glass and saw horses in my living room. Um, but I just was thinking, uh, have you ever tried to pull on the string and actually create like a funnel or depth to it? And like, no. it's like a reverse wormhole that some people walk towards the camera spinning their steel wool. Yeah. Have you ever, I don't know if it's been done. I mean, I think it should be. I don't, Try yeah. it. See, the way I set mine up, it sounds like it would be really tricky. Like, I'd have to totally change my, my spot. Because I basically just hang hang a string on a backdrop stand and uh, tape it to there. So when it's spinning, it's not ruffling all over. But um, mm. there's definitely, like, some tweaks that I could do that make it better. Sometimes, like, if it's not set right, like, the spin is weird or like longer on one side so it's always angled weird so there's always like little adjustments and that's i mean that's what i winter is all about for me is you're stuck inside it's too cold outside like hey i once in a while you go embrace that and i know some light painters do a lot more of it i gotta give them props on that mm -hmm. like eric gray is always oh man always, eric and kim are always in the cold areas and She's like, like oh. she's an animal, man. She's tough yeah, as nails. I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know how you get convinced somebody to go do that. Like, stand yeah. out there in, in a t-shirt or, or tank top or or less. <laughs> or less. Yeah. yeah. I struggle with it. Uh, it's it's actually uh, the the biggest challenge I have with my partner is is you know she gets cold really quick and I'm very warm blooded. We talked about this on the last podcast. You know, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, and she's shivering and then she's like not holding still and I'm getting frustrated, but I can't get frustrated because she's literally shaking it in front of me and I'm like, God, I feel so bad, but I want to do this piece of art. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, no, yeah, it's, so. it's an ongoing battle. Um, I think big jugs of miso soup, uh, big things of hot water tea, yeah. um, yeah. you know, that can stay warm in a warm, nice canteen that really yeah. helps. Um, you know, having huge coats and trying to get, like you said, uh, everything set up, composed, camera right, tripod yeah. right, you know, do a test yeah. shot. Yeah, way before literally you have that spin, off. Throw the fur coat just off the screen, you know, or hand it to yeah. somebody so it doesn't hit the snow, and then yeah. wrap them back up as soon as they get done. <laughs> yep, yep. So I kind of skip all that, and I just, uh, I just go into my cave, and I just, because it's, it's, it's kind of easy once you... You gotta figure it out. Like I started out just buying like a couple king size black bed sheets and using that to like black out the walls and the ceilings, the floor and everything. Cause then you're just like, you you got all the time in the world. You don't have to worry about like uh, anything like time frame wise of any light leaking in or this or that. You just have to not trip on your tripod. Cause you know, my room's not very big. Like, like you say, Ugh. with the light painting, everything explodes. You got you got your torches over here. You got your blades over here, and there's a brush like next to the camera because you're gonna use that next. You got something in your back pocket. Next thing you know, by the end of the night, like in a in a room, it's just like it looks like a, a light painting prize box just blew up, and it's all in front of you. It's all spread out. 
No, so. totally, man. I just posted one on my story the other day of Mayhem. It was like literally 55 different light painting tools, which is embarrassing enough that I have that many. But I've just been collecting them and building them and then collecting yeah. them. And then, you know, some continue on in my practice and some some just kind of sit on the shelf for a bit. I don't know. I, I, I've I gotten better at this, but I used to leave something behind at every place I shot at. Every time. Without fail, it was either a blade, a flashlight, maybe a, a remote trigger, something, you know, maybe something not as big important. I've definitely lost some, some expensive things, and I've gone back and found them, and other times I've not. So, uh, same with breaking. Like, I used to be the worst with the plexiglass blades. That's why I started okay. making making my own was because I just broke like five of them or, or four of them. And I was like, that's it. I can't afford to just keep breaking these things. Just yeah. I can make them myself. <sighs> and uh, those broke too. But it was okay that I broke them, you know? Like, ah. And then when the Kyo system came out, it was a lot easier to make them. And, and just like you break it, just put it back on with the broken piece off. Now you got a new tool. You know? It's just shorter. It's the same yeah, thing. It's, it's just shorter. shorter. Maybe got a little edge somewhere, you know? Well, buddy, I have to I have to admit publicly that I lost your big you had a big hand blade and I, I lost it at, I lost it at Birdie Man. It was the only thing actually I lost this year, which is oh. very uh, crazy. But I must have I had it out I had it out and I actually had um I had the rainbow uh, gels all the way down each of the fingers and oh, so cool. yeah, I, I was gonna make that. a big rainbow streak. With a little bit of fiber optic on both ends of the floor and just do a full rainbow and then have somebody in front of the rainbow or catching the rainbow. Right. Um, but I never got to do it because I, I literally got back. That's it. That, oh, that, cool. was, that was made with the hand. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. I love that piece, yep. by the way. It's, it's absolutely Thank gorgeous. You. Uh, it's amazing, man. And uh, I got to say, dude, uh, this uh, you were obviously you were there. In fact, you probably said it at least once, if not five times, like I did as well as Zoe. Dude, where's my flashlight? I mean, oh, this is uh, exactly York? where this uh, in New York when we had a meetup. This is exactly where this podcast name came from. I mean, it was yep. you and me and Zoe yep. and Dee and everyone and Melissa. It was just yeah, and Katie. Oh, yeah, when I, when I saw saw the name of the podcast, that was like. He definitely got that from the NYC uh, LPWA meetup. I was yeah. like, because that, that must have been like like every time we, we moved locations. It's not more than every time we moved the locations. It's like, have you seen my flashlight? Have oh, you seen man. this flashlight? Have you got that little guy, that little light? <sighs> so, like, I got a whole bunch of little ones. If you lose that, I can. <laughs> it just tortures me, man. It tortures me, especially since they're black. And often I'm just like putting them down and they're like rolled underneath my backpack, which is also black. And so you're looking through yeah. all the pockets. You're like, it should be right here. And it's not. And then you don't even think about lifting your bag up and looking at all the like, yeah. you know, gems yeah. that have funneled underneath it. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I have gotten, I have gotten better with that. Um, for my flashlights, I keep them all in a bag, like a separate plastic bag that's like clear you just see right through it you know what you're grabbing um and when you're done using it you either i put it in my pocket because i'm going to use it again or i put it in there other than that i'll i'll dedicate certain flashlights to certain tools and like they don't come off until i'm done because yeah. that way if i lose it, it it's harder to lose something that's attached and then just that one little flashlight that's rolling off that's <sighs> probably like one of the most expensive things like out of the tools you know they're like I mean, the cheapest, I think I got a great, like, the this one flashlight for 20 bucks, but everything else has been, like, you know, 50, 60. Yeah. They're not cheap. Not at all. <laughs> no, not they're, at all. They're tough to lose. And that, too, is, uh, I've had one taken away at the, at the airport because of the little bevel. Ah, interesting. Yeah, so be mm. careful with that, too, because it sucks. To, that, and that was, like, an expensive, I think that was, like, $65 in shipping and everything, and they're like, nope. You can't take it with you. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do with it? This is like, they're like, you can, can you take it off? The, the, the bevel point? Like, no, it wasn't even much, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, you're not yeah. talking about the, the silver Claris ring that keeps it circular, are you? The one it, where it comes in and you have to take it off? You're talking about a... Uh, yeah, well, some of those come with like, a, it's like a, it's like a bevel, instead of it being circle. Yeah. It's got like edges. So, okay. so like you can, it's like a tactical. It's oh, like tactical yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So those, 
airport still lights. Apparently, it's a weapon. So be careful when you go flying with your flashlight. Okay. Now, yeah. I mean, I traveled quite a bit last year, and I, I didn't. I didn't have one. I didn't have one question about any of it. In fact, I even the one thing that I I thought I got questioned about, and I think it was because they had never seen it before, was my lens ball. And that's oh, and that yeah. holds and that holds some weight, you know. I mean, if I clop somebody with that, that would do yeah, some damage. Yeah. You know? I mean, so they were like, "What is this?" You know, you know. Can I showed them some? You know, the main thing is you show them the back of your camera, and then they all of a sudden are like, "Okay, well, obviously yeah. this, you know, you're doing something, you know, with this stuff." <laughs> the the, the, uh, the most awkward thing is like these these uh, Anton Mellon flashlights. The new one's totally different from the old, the, the classic one that they used to make. But it was ri literally just like made out of a copper pipe. So it's just like this copper pipe with fittings on it and like a battery and some electronic pieces. And like I got flagged. I, I, I just got used to taking it out and putting it in its own box to go mm -hmm. through the thing. Because I knew from the get, like almost every other time it was, they would stop it and what, what's this? And then the ball, the, you know the ball of light tools, all looking weird looking things, and they're just like, "What's this? What's yeah. this?" And like they're all flashlights. Don't say <laughs> grenade. Oh, <laughs> don't I, say that. I said it's not no. a bomb. I did no. that. That was that was a big thing. I had. No. I was like, oh, yeah. I shouldn't have said that. I said I should have just said it's a flashlight, not it's not a bomb. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But that that was it's crazy, man. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the perfect flow state, and I know that I know that you uh, can get into this. I think all creatives can get into this flow state. I think athletes can. I think anyone can. Really, in any task that yeah. they're doing, it's high level of focus. Um, can you define your your flow state? How you get there? Um, is so it the same me, as in music, as in light painting? It it varies. It varies a lot because um, it depends on where I am, who I'm with. You know, like I, I think what feels like the best flow state is when I'm about an hour into light painting after I've been setting stuff up in my in, in the studio, and like I've got the music going. I've I've stopped paying attention to the music now. I'm just jamming to it, and I'm just on a roll, just shooting. Oh, that's good. That's not. This is working. This isn't. And I'm just like rolling through the punches. Um, but I wouldn't say that's where I put out my best work either, though, because, it's, you know, you work with the right people and you just you guys are just killing it. You know, you, everyone's on page with each other and you're just like, all right, you're going to do this. We're going to do that. And whatever your job is, that's your job. And things yeah. are just going and then you switch it up. And then so now things are moving even more. Um and that's that's a lot more fun too. This it's you know it's more of an extroverted uh, flow of mind mind state um, rather than when I'm in here like I don't even want to talk to anybody. Like I'm in I'm focused. I'm I'm doing this. Like if you're calling me, I'm hanging up. Like you're now you're the only thing you're interfering the music. Like the music is just to keep things moving, and now it's stopping, and I can't stop right now. So I usually put it on airplane mode when I'm when I'm deep into that. Um, yeah. yeah, it can be distracting too. But uh, my social life has dwindled a, a lot since I've been a light painter. So I, I, I don't really? get quite yeah I don't get quite the uh, the social calls as, as I once did because you know after about a year there was like oh cool you're calling to come light paint cool you want to go light paint oh where are we going to light paint oh where are we going to light paint and everyone's like. Yeah. Not really into light painting, and I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm into light painting. <laughs> uh, see, I, I had some. I feel like some, some, some people like started getting more into light painting because they were just like, ah, I want to go do it easier. Like, because some of them would get bored, but they're like, one of their friends love it too, so then they're like, they all want to go. And there's always somebody who's just like, chilling, like not part of anything. And it's not like they're just like in a corner, like sulking or anything. They're just like, I just listening to the music and drinking the beers like you guys do all this work running around tripping over stuff you know and then they're just like that was cool stuff and then they hop in for what or you like pull them in you're like all right you're gonna model this time get out there and they're like all right all right totally right. yeah and then and i love that because that's spontaneous magic you know i mean like 
just by having a new person in the frame, you're kind of like, cool, I'm feeling this vibe from them. I want to use these colors because I feel like those colors would go well with, with you, yeah. With them, you know, like yeah. them specifically. Well, and, you know, I'm really starting to try to like layer, you know, color selection is very important to me. Symmetry is very important to me. Mm -hmm. You know, a message, uh, just even a positive message or what I'm, the story I'm telling is also yeah. very important to me. Um, and that that part can be really hard too. Is the like, hardest. A lot of times I try not to think too much about the message, or or even think too much about uh, what what I'm the theme of what I'm trying to do. I just kind of get like a, a ballpark idea and just kind of run with it. Because if I get too caught up, next thing you know, you're spending like an hour, two hours trying to get that one shot, and it's just not working. And like. For me, that doesn't work for me. I'm, after after like the tenth failed shot, it's like I'll come back to it, and I'll come back to it, but probably in the, another day completely, because like I'll just switch it up. All right, that's not working. Let's go do this. Let's let's just toss this whole idea into the recycle bin, and and it'll come back. You know, usually, usually, that's what I love working with people, especially new who have never seen it or don't do it very much or no what's really going on because you're just like give me an idea because sometimes they're just completely like crazy like no you can't do that like that's just like too much but those ideas are the ones that are really fun because you're like well let's see what happens i've never tried that before um interesting let's see how i could approach that and you just kind of start thinking and they're just throwing ideas out and you're just like taking them all in you're like hey, this would go here and then I'd have to do this, and I have to figure out how I would get get this to to be either that that much bigger or smaller or what colors. You know, that's the other thing too. Is it's easier to think of ideas when you're just having people throw them at you, and you're mm. just like, all right, give me a color, give me a tool, give yeah. me this. Let's see what we're gonna make. You know? Yeah. Oh, and I love it because, you know, especially the first timers, you know, you put a brush in their hand and oh. anything they make. I mean, they literally are like, oh, my God, I yeah. am tracing magic through space. And yeah. they're just like, you know, that's I mean, really, the ultimate is when you see somebody uh, that's not familiar with it paint for the first time. I mean, it's like hearing your 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 child uh, laugh or or, you know, like smile at you. I mean, it's like one of these things like, no, nah! yeah, yeah, that, that light bulb that it's like it's magic. That's why I call it my book of magic, because it's because it. it really it does feel like magic when you when you see that picture from going from black that black image on the back of your screen to, and just like it's like a, a a revealing party, especially if you have the noise reduction on. You're just like, oh, here it comes. Ooh. Ah! Man, great! Everyone's running around. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, dude. Uh, noise reduction. Let me tell you, it's it's the bane of my existence. Uh, you oh, know, Chris Bauer and I, I really go don't round it. and round about like, oh my god, I gotta I gotta honestly buy almost a second camera like he does and just shoot the second shot while that one's rendering because right. you know yeah, like yeah. I'm very repetitive. You know, when I when I'm in the zone, like I you know I came from an athletic background, so it's like, dude, when I'm shooting free throws. I want to shoot 53 free throws in a row to really get that muscle memory down because really yeah. it's painting is muscle memory. Um, and that's, you know, it's like, if you wait for like three minutes before you go again, you're just like, you're, you're freezing you're the kicker. You're yeah, throwing yeah, you're your free time out. It's like, yeah, no, it's yeah, yeah. Want to go. yeah, you're losing your fire. That's yeah. why I, I, that's why a lot of times I don't even use it. Cause unless I'm like, I know this shot, I've been wanting to get the shot. And like everything's already been planned out. I've probably tried it already before. And now I'm like, this is going to be the finale. This is going to be the one. That's when I'll turn it on. Because if I don't get it after the first couple, after doing all that, I'll, pro I'll probably just move on. And I'll, yeah. and like, I'm not trying to wait five minutes to move on. Now I'm like, I got to go test some new stuff out. I got to I gotta get go change up my whole exposure now. This is a whole new game, a whole new scene. Um, I love it. Uh, speaking about with kids, the, those are kids are my favorite to, to to bring into the mix too, because they uh, they're so fun to teach because they, they're just like all all about it. You know, they have the craziest ideas, the funniest. They're just like, get me swinging from the tree, and you're like, ah, uh, well, no, like that's probably not a good idea. Your parents didn't like that one. 
uh, but I can turn you into a monster, you know? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. Uh, I did uh, my my cousin's girlfriend's kid. He's about eight. We're all just like having dinner and stuff. And he's like, oh, I drew this for you. Because we were talking about life painting. So he wanted to go draw something. And he drew this little monster thing. And I was like, you know what? Let's go make this a light painting. And we did. And it was a lot of fun. The kids loved it. Parents, my cousin and, and, and girlfriend loved it. And I, the similarity for it, especially because, like, I didn't want to just make it. I wanted the kids to get involved, too. So I wanted everyone to have a job in the painting. And I, and we did that. And it came out, like, it's a, it came out like a kid's drawing, but in light painting. So I absolutely love that photo. You know, it's not anything, like, like extravagant, but it's just, like, the essence of, of light painting for me right there. Uh, totally, man. I mean, the kids, they're just, you know, they're so honestly kind of naive to adult things. They still believe in magic. They still believe that anything is possible. Their imaginations are, you know, wild beyond, you know, I mean, they're just, there's I, nothing I, that can too. stop them. That's, that's how I am. And, you know, so, I mean, and that's why, honestly, that is my root of why I like paint, because it, it honestly brings me back to being a kid. I mean, like, trying all this stuff and having fun. It's like the erector said, I'm a child of the 80s. You know, it's like, well, what can I build with these Legos? Or what can I build with this? And I can put these wheels on this tower. Now it's a moving robot. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, I don't see the robot. You're like, I do. Don't worry. <laughs> There's a robot there. Trust me. <laughs> Yeah, but it's funny you mentioned the, the human spirograph because you know when we were at actually the last meetup we were in in Oregon, um, we, we were we talked about putting me in a chest harness and swinging me from a crane with a couple tubes it's and so doing good, a human see? doing a human spirograph with me as the as the yeah. light source. Yeah, see, that's something a kid would come out and say. I that's know. Why, I think that's why we get along really well too, because like. I'm I'm still I'm I'm a kid in an, in an adult body like like of course you know you have to do certain things because you're an adult and you have to live make a living and and support yourself but but I try my best to to keep those kid qualities and that's why I love being around, like hanging out with kids it's just so fun like like the, the biggest thing I have to do is worry about getting in trouble by the parents because I'm like yeah, let's go do that. And like, that's not a good idea. Like, you know, I have my boundaries, obviously, but but I would go and swing myself up there. And they're like, yeah, that's a great idea. I was like, I can't let you do it, though. <laughs> Your parents kill me. But if I Definitely. kill myself, it's, it's all That's good. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all my fault. I'll take all responsibility for this. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Um, I got to ask you maybe a, more of a serious question. Um, if somebody came to you and said... I know better, but I keep doing it anyway. How would you help them? How, how, what would you say to them? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough because I say that a lot to myself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm the buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, this, this, is, this is like a lesson. I want to say this is like a lesson for both of us because it, if it's comes out sounding good for you it's probably good for me too um it's you know i think some of those things you do because you just it's like a it's like a bad habit that like you just don't want to get rid of you know um and a lot of times it takes something important to change it um so uh, that's a really hard question Depending on the severity of it, I, I say that I usually just let it fly or I'll go, things need to change. And, and you have to, you know, it's like it's like breaking those bad habits. You want to quit smoking. Like, sure, you can go in and uh, uh, take some sort of prescription that your doctor gave you to help calm down from it and this and that. But, like, if a doctor comes and tells you, like, you're going to die if you keep smoking, you, you got, like, another year in you, things tr turn. Things start turning, and you go, oh, well, shit. And, uh, you know, my this, this actually happened with my father two years ago. He needed to quit smoking. And he had done it off and on, off and on. But then he had started having heart problems from it. And cold turkey, done. He doesn't even think about it anymore. I was like, it's just like that, that quick. Like, when when you really want it or really need to, then you, you do. Um, so... Yeah, 
that and and you know the other big thing is just being around the right people mm-hmm. you know if you're trying to stop something or do something you know hanging around certain people that aren't doing it or are doing it whatever it is you're trying to get away or, or get into you know they're not going to help you do it but the people who are who are like you want to be a light painter hang out with light painters as much and like one of the big things that i want to do this year like is just go to as many light painting meetups as i can you know so so uh, and just meet up with other people because there's not many here but uh, i travel a lot so whenever i'm traveling especially with the light painters uh map now lightpainters.com map i anytime i go on a trip i i take a little peek at that and say i wonder if anyone's going to be around here you know um so yeah and and talking to them being inspired like learning it's like that in life you're what is it your five closest friends are is who you are kind of thing Mm. um that's that's true and if that's what it is then a lot of times it comes down to you know replacing one of those people as hard as that can be you know Mm. it can be really hard Mm. and it doesn't need to replace them and get rid of them but you just have to separate yourself yep prioritize what's important to you and what's and what's beneficial and healing to you uh in in a situation like that what's positive for you and if it's negative for you and you want to make a change get rid of it replace it with something good you know i i for a lot of years, uh, I always, I, I th- at the new year, I know it's cliche, but I always try to like take a bad habit. We all have them. I have a lot um, and replace it with a good one. And, you know, eventually you're going to. Uh, a re- different person. Like, yeah. As long as you keep on to it. The real hard thing that I have with is, uh, I'll get into that. You know, it's like working out. I don't really work out a lot, but I'm active. I'm, I'm okay. always doing something. So I don't like the gym, but I, I like going rock climbing, you know, like. I'll go, I'll go walk up a mountain all day, like all day and then and be cool with it. But I don't want to go to the gym for half an hour, like run on a treadmill Oof. Or, or just like lifting weights. Like I want to go lift something to, to give me something back, like, you know, um, no, totally. I think, uh, you know, honestly, uh, for me, my intrinsic value of going to the gym, I, I was, I was really fit for a long time, my whole life. And, um, it was driven honestly through ego because you know I'm not playing sports. I'm not playing professional sports. There's no reason why I need to have a professional athlete body when I'm not even using it. I'm using it. I was using it honestly uh, for selfish reasons, and that really hit me with a ton of bricks when I made like some life changing um, changes. Uh, it just was like there's nothing attractive about that, that and yeah. and it just was so empty for me. And I and I really hope that. I guess the lesson is this is we can tie this into light painting is that, you know, find the reasons why you truly love this art form, you know, and stick to that um, because that'll never dry up. You know, you paint for ego, you paint for, you know, popularity or to get or to get the opposite sex to to be attracted to you and all that stuff. I mean, it happens. I've, I'm guilty of it um, myself. I tried not to. Uh, but, you know, when I started this, I have to admit uh, I'm on the record that I did it for the wrong reasons. And right. I am, I am light years, uh, I think better from that. And, and I learned a lot uh, from that. And now I, you know, I try to paint from a place that comes from my heart and I, and I, I enjoy it so much more. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, do you still work out though? Cause, cause just cause you got a rocking body, I mean, doesn't mean uh, that, like it's still good for you. Your body does yeah. feel better. You know, it's like, it's like, um it's your body it's your temple yeah you still gotta take care of it like I, I instead of actually like you said instead of going to the gym and standing in front of a mirror and doing the same thing over and over again right, and right. like you know i used to pick out like one body part I even mean, think about this i used to do like so one good. body part and do like for an hour and then i was like the next day would do another one i mean dude it was like so obsessive that it was like you know it wasn't healthy for me and then i was doing it for the wrong reasons and so i internally felt empty you know there was right. an emptiness involved and there was an honestly there was an uh, kind of an integrity issue it's like why am i doing this am i doing right. this for the right intentions and it wasn't it didn't align with my heart and uh it soon dried up and i do go back and i and i and i do like you know 
super inclined on the walking and I do little right. weights in here and there, but I, but yeah, yeah, it's good. It's still good for you. I like, I, I hate the gym, but I don't, I can't knock anybody that does it. Cause like, yeah. cause I, I just have a hard time dedicating myself to that, you know? Yeah. And I give them props for that. One, one thing though, that, uh, I think is a good reminder for us all though, is even things that you're passionate about and that you love do can, can and do like burn out, even if it's, for for a time, you know, um, like last in December and in, in November, I had do, I was doing a ton of traveling last year, and I was just a, a lot of projects, and playing a lot of music and gigs, and getting gigs for photography, doing regular light painting, you know, and like just doing stuff. And then if I wasn't doing any of that, I was I was on the road. And uh, when I got back, and everything kind of stopped, I went back to just working Monday to Friday and that's it I kind of lost like my drive and and uh, you know I was like oh I'm not light painting I'm not playing music like I don't know what to do so mm. I would like try and force myself to light paint right mm. oh you ever try to force yourself to do something that you oh, love man. but you're just forcing yourself to and nothing's Ooh. coming out so you're just losing. Oh, yeah. there was a moment I felt like I just forgot how to light paint like nothing worked every everything I tried to do was just like like no no like what is going on right now i can't even get the lighting right on this like i don't know what what's wrong and so i just dropped it i was just like you know everybody needs a break once in a while um you don't have to be full going full force into anything 24 7 i mean there's moments you do but you you gotta take a break otherwise you you will burn that passion out you know a lot of a lot of photographers i meet that do it for a job and I, you know, like last, two, two or three years ago when I was talking about trying to you know, like get into it and, and make it a job as well, they're like, don't, it's going to kill your passion. It's going to kill it. It's like, don't ever take a passion and turn it into a career. I'm like, that's, this, this doesn't make sense. Like you're, you're doing, there's something wrong there. Um, and there was a moment where I was doing stuff that I didn't necessarily like to do, but it was money and it was experience. So I was doing it and it, it never really bothered me though, because I knew like after that I could go home and, and do what I, I like to do. I could go mm. light, I could, I could, you know, go take some landscape photography because I got all my camera gear already. I've been shooting all day. I'm in the flow. So what the hell? Like, why would I like hate this job? Like, I know it's, you know, you go through those moments, but yeah, you just gotta remember to give yourself a break, and if and if uh, you're losing that passion, don't be afraid to like just lose it forever, because like mm -hmm. nothing, it, it it'll come back, and if it doesn't, something else is gonna fill it in, you know. Um, but I, 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 from some of the other podcasts or, and just people I talk to, you, you, there's always those light painters. You're like, where you been? You just kind of fell off the face of the earth. I'm like yeah, I just got busy doing other things and this and that. And then like the next year, they're everywhere. They're all over the place again. You're like, yeah, he's back. So, so that's yeah, and I think that's life, man. You know, we're all ebbing and flowing. You know, uh, that's again the attestment of you, you only see what's on Instagram. You know, you don't have a nice hour long yeah. podcast to get to know somebody and to feel out, you know, why they're not light painting or what's going on in their life. You know, it's like yeah. there's there's so many different things. You know, I I. I just even recently, I'm struggling because I, I send somebody a text or a video message. I even take the time to actually send them an actual minute video message. And it's all, wow. you know, and, and I don't hear anything back. And I'm like, oh, man, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so then I work about it. It's like, and then they get back to me and they're like, oh, I was in Tahiti for like, you know, five days. And I didn't have my right. phone. Or I was like, you know, I was on, out doing my thing. And I'm, I have to think about that, you know this world does not evolve around me. It's like, you yeah. know, it's yeah, yeah. Someone else is dealing with their own stuff and they have their own agenda. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's a quick way. That's a quick way to lose me. If somebody, if somebody gets upset cause, cause I don't respond to them right away. Like, like I'm doing my thing. And like, if, if I'm not doing anything, yeah, sure. I'll respond back. But like, if I'm doing something, I might look at it and see it, but, but I'm, I put it back, like, oh, I'll get back to it. And I totally forget. And then the next thing you know, they're like, oh, shit, I totally forgot this. And they're, they're calling me again. I'm like, all right, now I got to call it back. I got to do that, you know. I'll, I'll make the effort back. But, like, it happens. 
you know. Yeah. I don't get upset if, if somebody does it to me. Like I hope, and I hope they don't get upset when I like when I do that, because because the whole you know social media for me, it's weird. Like sometimes I'll be on it too much, but I just kind of like I'm more like like I don't like commenting a lot. I don't like having my opinion out there because everyone's got an opinion and everyone's got something to say about everything. <laughs> so I don't get involved in any of that, any of that crap. The only thing you see on me commenting is supporting somebody or uh, informing somebody about some sort of event or something going on or, or sharing, which sometimes we get in the moods. Usually I don't sharing like, like with the guitar photo that I had posted that whole long message. I was like, that was a lot. Like, I don't say a lot like that that often. Um, so sometimes I feel like I'm not that present out there. But it doesn't bother me because that's how I am. I'm just like, get to know me. Like, if we have our little talks in the DMs and, and in person. Like, that's cool. Those are, th That's where I like to talk to people. Um other than that, I'm usually just like a like or love kind of person. Let tap, double tap it, and 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 keep mo moving. If I really like it, like I love dissecting photos, like like light painting. How do they do that? Where, like you know, that's one of my favorite things. Instagram. That's what I use Instagram for is inspiration. Mm. So I try to learn learn just just by dissecting the photo. All right, so he used the blade to do this. Like you you know certain tools and certain motions and textures you see in a photo you're like all right i got this figure this is that now how did he do this and i'll sit there and try and figure it out and maybe even go test it out and if i can't figure it out i'll just hit him up like yo i, I have to ask like how did you do this um no, I, I wish more people did you know i think I, I wish the more people would communicate in the community um and i hope that people feel comfortable Asking, uh, asking anyone, asking me or asking anyone, um, just yeah. and hopefully that person on the receiving end of that will take the time to respond. Um, you know, I think that's what this community is about. Like you said in the beginning, it's, it's all about sharing. It's all about getting better. It's all yeah. about making beautiful art. Um, you know, I mean, that's really the main goal. So, yeah. And one, one thing like that, that Dennis spoke about is like all these all things, like most of the, the work that I do is for me. Right. Because you always try to take pictures that everybody's gonna like and like and we talked about this yesterday how my favorite photos are usually like just like you feel like they just kind of got thrown under the rug and then we just post some thing that you did and it was a fail but you're like you got nothing else to post that day or that week and you're like i'm just gonna use it and everyone's just like you're like what the hell like this took no effort or no thought into it at all and that, so i i learned just to like post whatever I have what I like and what everyone else likes is what they like. And so I usually print. I, when I'm printing, though, I only print what I like unless somebody asks. Because I'm like, I, if I'm going to print it and it's going to be up on a wall that I'm, I'm walking by and looking at all the time, those are going to be my favorites. And then it's, it's tough when they're like, oh, well, you should, you should print this one like for this art show. They're like, you should print this one. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, I don't know. I really like that one. Like, I want to print this one, and they're like, oh, but it doesn't really fit the theme. And I was like, the theme is the only reason I'm saying mm. I, I'm agreeing you with on that. Mm. Like, all right, all right. If it doesn't fit the theme with everything else, understandable. But if it, anything else, like, I'm just putting it up. I'm yeah, just putting man. it up. This totally. is what I want people to see. Yeah. No, no, I struggle with the same, you know, I, I, it's in a constant struggle for me. I try not to let it affect me, but I think we'd all be lying to ourselves if we said oh, it still does. Didn't, didn't let it affect me. Um, or any of us, um, you know, my, my tube spins, uh, always do way better, um, than any of my creative, uh, outside the box, you know, yeah. uh, struggles. Uh, yeah. and so, you know, I mean, and, and that's, and that's okay. And that's, that is what it is. That's what people like. That's beautiful. It's a, it's a very unique art form, um, that I, I love personally. It's why I do them. Um, yeah. but you know, it's just interesting. And it's like, and then honestly, I felt I felt guilty of this, which is which I think everyone needs to go through something like this, a catharsis, because I was and, and tra granted traveling is a little easier when you just have tubes because you can just travel anywhere and you, you're just doing tubes and there's nothing wow. else to bring in there and it's fiber optics. That's what I travel with. That's yeah, it. you know, you like can't you break them. Thing. You can't really 
you know, they're, they're easy. They're light. That's when I'm, when I'm doing any type of traveling and, and I don't have, a, I can't bring a ton of stuff. It's the flashlights and the fiber optic whips and the brushes. Like yeah. that's it. That's all. Like I can figure it out from there and maybe like a ball, an orb tool, you know? Yeah. Um, cause for me, br- the, the tubes are too hard for me to travel. They're so long, you yeah. know? Like, I don't know how, like, I get when, when you got the bag and everything, you can go throw it on a plane, but, like, I backpack a lot of stuff, so, mm. like, I don't have room on my backpack or a second bag to bring on the plane, and then everyone's, like, you know, then you got the chance of it being a hassle, they're, like, oh, that's too big, you, you can't put it up there, this or that, and I'm, like, okay. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. My, my whips fit right in the, my camera bag has a laptop holder slot, and that's where all the whips go, and it holds them all tight, and it's nice and light. Nice, dude. Nice, nice. Um, well, buddy, we talked a lot about music, and, and I know it's it's a monumental and probably the most influential part of your life. Uh, can you give us a song that could be added to the Master Spotify playlist? I mean, oh, what inspires uh, you? Yeah, it's funny. When, I, when we were in Oregon, uh, I was playing a lot of music because I had brought a speaker, so I was... I was playing music, and a, a couple of people had asked me about a couple of different songs, different, like totally different genres, just because it was I had going on all, all, all week, you know, I was bumping stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I actually have a, a playlist of those songs. Um, well, it's not all those songs, it's a mix of all the artists that I usually listen to. And it's like I got like maybe three or four songs of each artist from all these different genres. But, uh, so I'll have to share that and like figure out how we can fuse the two without it being too much. Because I think I, I think I made like a hundred songs of the list. So it's a long list. Cause it's, yeah. Cause I, I jam out to everything. I go from from uh, electronic to to reggae to rock to blues to little little bit of country, not much. Um, to uh, metal, you know to. I, I don't know. I just, I, I love it all. Um, nice. the pop music, you know? But, buddy, you got to give me one song because oh, I oh, had it yeah. on my end. <laughs> all right, all right. Just all right. one, just one. Shit. Give me anything. Uh, I'm going to give you the song Give Me Rain by Spoonbill. I think you'll like that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I especially yeah. after these podcasts because I honestly I go right to it and I and I listen to it and then I I think about the person who who requested it or or said it and gave it to us yeah. and how it you know how they would like it and I try to let you know it's very it's very um, important to me uh, through yeah, music. Yeah. Yeah. See, so. I I usually have to look through a list because I just have when when you say give me a song, it so much just runs through my head. I'm like, where do I want to go with this? Like. Do I want to go old school with what I grew up and then stuck with me since like 10 years old, you know, like, like, cause then I could say like, uh, War Pigs by, uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, uh, so yeah, I really, but give me rain, give me rain by, by Spoon Villa is, I think it'll be right up your alley. I love and, it. I, and I love light painting to it. So cool. I can't wait to listen to it, man. Uh, buddy. This has been an awesome. I got one final question for you, man. If we open up a light painting school, I would love to have you come teach, man. If you're going to teach the freshmen or seniors, doesn't matter, any kind of level of light painting yeah. or photography, yeah, buddy, what, what's, what's your course that you're going to be teaching? Uh, you know, similar to like a Hogwarts of light painters. All right. Uh, if I was going to teach, like, so I guess technique or tools. Doesn't cool. matter. It could be anything. You could just be like, "Hey, these are how all the tools work, and this is why the textures of each tool are oh, so." Cool. I mean, whatever. That, that would be a fun one. I would like that. I would like that because I, I I love experimenting and seeing what 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 brings out different textures and, and how they they work with each other. Because some things just the the way they they flow are usually too harsh for other things, and and, and you know they kind of cut out whatever. If you have like L wire. And you're using a tube, you know, the, the the tube will kind of take over wherever that L wire was together. But other others don't do that. Other different uh, tools don't do that. So that would be a fun one. Um, that or like I really I, I do love working with fiber optic. So I would like to show them like all the different ways. Or yeah, hmm, that's tough. What else would I teach? Like 
working together. Mm-hmm. I do because I, I do love collaborating um, because that's how I started from the get go was was trying to figure things out with somebody and then when they couldn't do it anymore I just started grabbing people I'm like hey come do this with me I don't know what I'm doing yet but it's cool it's cool anyway check it out and then you just kind of get into this guy and you're like all right so th- what's the idea and you just get everybody to come together now how are we going to execute it you know who's going to do what who's going to take what role you know and then everybody has something that they'd like to include or add to it and you're like perfect Yes. All right. Let's go. And you round it all up, and then I'll set everything up on the camera, make sure the composition's good, and then everyone will go and take their place. And I, I would love to teach a class like that because the stuff that came up would come come out of that would be like me some of the coolest stuff because it's just big old collaborations. Oh, buddy. You know, I couldn't agree more, man. I think it's your superpower to to bring people together and have fun. I mean, like I've noticed it right away between us. Um, You know, as soon as I met you in New York, I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. It's translated to everywhere we've been together, including Oregon. Um, Man, that would be awesome, dude. That would be that would be so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I would absolutely love that. (laughs) Um, all right, buddy. Uh, so where can we find your work? We've got you on Eelski at Facebook, uh, Aaron Simmons at Facebook, Eelski yeah. on Instagram. Um, any yeah. other places to, to show your work besides right the art show? And we're going to we're gonna put the link to the art show and then the address and the time. And, cool. Perfect, yeah. yeah. Um, right now, that's it. I'm working on a website. But for me, websites are just like, ah, it's such like, like, <laughs> cool work. <laughs> Like, I like doing work, but it has to, I, something about it, it's like, I don't know how to, it's like doing math homework. That's what it feels like. Mm. I like math, but I hate doing math homework. Yeah. It's too much. It's like, yeah. I don't want to answer the same question 10 times. It's like, or do the same equation. I got to, like, like we said, I got to switch things up. Like, if I'm doing something for too long, I got to, I got to switch it up. Yeah. So, the website will be coming before summer gets here. Like, hopefully by spring beginning of spring because that's coming right around the corner yeah january flew by i was <laughs> so oh, it's man. never shorter so <laughs> i love it brother i love it man well thanks for sitting down with me man thanks for taking the time dude it's been an yeah, awesome podcast uh i can't wait to have you back on the show i gotta interview some more people and then we'll do uh we'll do everyone again and we'll see where they're at in a few months and uh we'll keep this thing going man yeah yeah it sounds great looking forward to the next one too all right buddy All right. Take care. See you, everybody. Peace. Peace out.